So we've got Ben here again, sporting a, a nice jumper too that I see. Stylish, comfy, yeah, warm. Warm. Daggy, daggy work clothes, which I've been wearing since five o'clock this morning, which is now almost midnight. Uh, we've just got back from tuning yeah. the old faithful here uh, with the new motor in it, which you can see in a previous video. Uh, it's been going really well. Boost. Yeah, um, and no knock. No knock. The knock got better as we fed more timing into it. Yeah, the engine got quieter as we fed more timing in. Um, pulls really strongly all the way to redline. Anyway, we'll Good get on. With, we'll get on with the main, the main thing. I'll let you go home, then I can go to bed and get up in another four <laughs> hours. But um, a lot of you guys have been asking questions about the ECU setup in this car. So a lot of you can't believe that it's still a stock ECU. Um, so I'm going to get Ben, who's the expert. I've tried to tell you guys bits and pieces from what I know, but I don't know enough. So I'll let Ben give you guys basically a run through on how it works, uh, the firmware, everything. I've already kind of gone through the NV RAM setup, how we flash it. Ben mentioned that on the dyno as well. So yeah, tell us what we need to know, Ben. Alrighty, so it runs the um, standard or uh, standard Commodore computer. Um, code name 082, which is the last three digits of the um, service number. Um, basically, it's the computer that's fitted to pretty much um, every V6 and V8, VN and VP Commodore, and VR manual. Um, and the VR manual computer uh, is a little bit different. It's, it's a variant of the original computer, and, and it has the um, high-speed serial communication stuff built in. So oh. you can talk to it straight away with the, with the computer. Yeah. Um, so this particular ECU is retrofitted with an aftermarket um, NV RAM or non-volatile RAM. Yeah. Um, so that just um, can I stop you there. That's basically like yeah. a. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> that's that to, like for. This is how I think about it. It's like basically solid state memory, like a yeah. SD card, yeah. you know, a solid state hard drive, yeah. or hard drive. But yeah, yeah, it's like um, it's like a memory or the, stick. the RAM on your phone. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, it's kind of anal analogous to a memory stick, you yeah. can read and write to it. Um, whereas the original EEPROM uh, is kind of like a VHS. You've got to go back, <laughs> That's a good erase yeah. the whole thing, and then write again yeah. from the beginning to the end. Whereas, um, like a memory stick, you can write to individual segments. Like, yeah. Loosely, that's, that's what's analogous okay. to. Yeah. Um, so hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Yeah, so what that means is we can write to any part of the table or any part of the um, um, memory uh, yep. at will. Yep. So uh, if we want to change one cell on the table, we can do that um, live in real time. Yeah. Um, but all that's not um, not there in the standard code. So um, some um, really really smart and great bunch of guys um, on the on the PCM hacking forum have rewritten the code from the factory code. Um, and boy, have they done a good job. <laughs> yeah, they've done some really really cool stuff. Um, so they've taken all the um, unused and, and useless factory code that was there, deleted all of that, created some space, yeah. um, and then rewritten the code so that it does all the things that um, the enthusiasts uh, want. So boost up to three bar or two bars of boost, yeah. which is so atmosphere um, and then two bars yeah. on top. Yep, two bars on top. So one bar is 14.5 psi, so it's good for about 30 pounds of boost. Yeah. Um, uh, it's also got uh, knock logging, so you can log all the knock, wideband input, which is really important, yeah. um, as well as fle four flexible outputs. Um, yeah. So basically, it's called a flexible output because it's a table that you can map to a couple of different parameters. Yeah. So in your ECU, we've set it up um, for basically a warning light uh, for running lean in boost. Yeah. So we've set up some thresholds. Um, when Which I haven't yet installed, but we'll be getting there. <laughs> yeah, so uh, when it when it's into boost and uh, from the wideband input it's it's running lean, then it'll trigger an output that uh, Carl's going to yeah. wire up to a buzzer and a light. Yeah. Um, the other output we have is for knock noise. So if yeah. it goes above the knock threshold um, or noise threshold that's determined to be knock, then that will also trigger the output. Uh, and that's mappable versus engine RPM. Yeah. So that, to me, that sounds basically like what you'd get in a high-end, so Haltech yeah. issue, yeah. And, which um, is pretty impressive. Yeah, you'd, you'd almost, with a Haltech, you'd probably almost need like a custom dash or something like that to have that style of feature. Yeah. Um, the main 
aftermarket ECU I could think of that will you be able to do that is Adaptronics um, 1280 ECU where yeah. you can you can remap the logic block so you can configure sort of how it works. All right. Um, yeah, so that that's really cool, a really really cool feature. Uh, we've just set it up so when Carl wires up all the um, all the lights and buzzers and warning things, then we'll be able to test it out properly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and all of that's with the factory ECU hardware. All the stock wiring is there, yeah. stock knock sensors. Yeah, so all I've had to do is buy an NVRAM board, which is how much, like. Think, yeah, about 220 or something yeah. like that by the time you get freighted. Yeah, so and then install cool. that. I think it was like it's soldered like a wire between yeah, one one wire, one wire or something. Yeah. yeah. So if anyone with basic, you know, electrical soldering skills can can do yeah. this, and it's a really good enthusiast kind of thing. Yeah, so you're really 100%. involved. You get to do a little bit of, you know, some basic mods inside the ECU. Um, and if there's ever any issues with the ECU, you can get another one pretty cheaply. That's it. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, also, it's got, yeah. yeah, and it's got um, dual. You can actually run four maps. Yeah, but you can um, only switch between two, a pair in each. Yeah, so um, that's a really good feature as well. So the the standard code or the the specialized code um, that you run can switch between two maps on the fly. Yeah, and so then, that's just by grounding a pin. Yeah, which is um, what do we use? We just use an un unused pin in the loom, moved it to. Yeah. The specified pin on the ECU, and then we can yeah. just flick a switch ground it, and then it flicks straight, flicks straight to uh, map B, which will be my methanol injection yeah. map yeah. once we set that up next time we're on the dyno. Yeah. So, what the guys have done is taken an unused input into the ECU and um, written some code so that that unused input will trigger between two sets of maps, yeah. and you can switch between that live real time on the um, in the ECU. Yeah. Um, and then they've also installed a larger chip, so memory-wise, um, than than what the space would take up for one tune. So then yeah. you have two tunes back to back on the chip, yeah. um, in layman's terms, and then you can switch between the two maps on that half. So imagine you have like a chip, and you yeah. have it divided into half, and then you have the same thing on both both yeah. um, sections of the chip. And then in the first half, you can switch between the two maps on the fly. And in the second half, you can switch between those two maps on the fly yeah. as well. Okay. But you can't switch between the first half and the second half while the yeah. car's running. Yeah. Um, so things like that, you could have methanol and non-methanol um, yeah. on one half for petrol, and then methanol, non-methanol for E85 on the second half. Ah. Um, or you could have um, like a really low octane fuel if you're stuck out in the bush somewhere and yeah. you can aim yeah. 91. Like a really, really lame tune on that, so that it's pretty safe, and then you yeah. can have your normal driving tune. Um, that's because very, those are situations yeah. you wouldn't need to switch on the fly. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, so really, really good features there. Yeah. And um, what else? Obviously, your tables are pretty high resolution, like the. Yeah. I don't know what you, how you'd say it, but. Yeah, so um, for this type code uh, from the factory, it's pretty much mapped to 4800 RPM. Yeah. Uh, from memory, and uh, in this code, it's it's defined all the way to 9600. So Jeez. if you've got a really high revving engine, you've got that control over. So you've got more spark. resolution over power yeah. factory, basically. Yeah. So the tables are heaps bigger, uh, yeah. and you can put all like, you can have really really fine control over fueling, um, spark control, and all yeah. that as well. Um, there's also impressive. soft touch rev limiter. Yeah, um, is that what I've got? Yeah, so you've yeah. got that as well. So basically, um, it starts to retard the timing to slow the engine down as it gets yeah. towards the rev limit. Yeah, it's a pretty, pretty cool code. Um, yeah. the, the software that we're using is called OSC 12P. Um, code 12 is the GM code for it, and then P is for professional, where they've modified yeah. all the code, how it works. Used by professionals. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to touch it. We're I'll still looking for those professionals, <laughs> but anyway. Mate, you've, uh, we've just come back from an awesome tuning run, so uh, it's, yeah, it's, it's running cool right Yeah, yeah. So that's um, that's the factory um, software, and you can talk to it with any sort of Windows computer. Um, yeah. With a USB cable, they do some really cool USB cables as well. Yeah. Um, really reliable stuff. Even just your standard ALDL. Yeah. I think I've just got a bog standard one that yeah. works. Yeah. I have that running straight into my um, Android dash through the ALDL Droid app, which you can check out in another video I've got as well, if you're interested. So, yeah, and um, 
that's the other thing you can log it um, through your Android phone or an Android head yeah. unit. Yeah. Um, get well, I think you can even write now. Yeah, you can on write Android. Android. Yeah. The guys, the um, I think Sebastian has been working with the guys at PCM Hacking to now be able to basically write your bin or your tune file from your phone or your whatever device is running the app, which is pretty cool. I haven't yet tried it, but. Yeah. It should be bug free now, surely. I think it's been like three years now. <laughs> so, no, it's a pretty good integrated um, solution and yeah. it's really robust, hasn't crashed or done anything like that. Yeah, well, it's um, been trouble free. Yeah, and um, the advantage as well is you get all the factory idle air control valve, um, power steering yeah. control, so when you load up with power steering, it compensates for that. Yeah. Air conditioner, air con um, yeah. load control. All the idle stability stuff is all there. All your so. cold start stuff as well. Yeah, cold start. Or well, every compensation, isn't it? Yeah, like e everything that you have from the factory, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a really, really good setup to have. And yeah. um, when you eventually go cam, it's got all the features there to uh, get a good, <laughs> nice idle. Yeah. If you want. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Isn't that why people go cams? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yeah. All right, awesome. Well, uh, thank you very much for my pleasure. your time tonight, Ben. Um, pleasure. You guys, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the comments. Ben is also starting up his own YouTube channel. Yes. Which is Benjineered. Yep, yep. Uh, so, what, what is that going to be covering, Ben? So, it's um, basically car stuff, enthusiast stuff. Um, you know, I like watching other people's YouTube channels, Carl's, and yep. there's a couple other guys out there, um, you know, DIY kind of guys. But um, one of the things I found uh, that would have been really good on YouTube is sort of a bit more casual, um, technical kind of channel. So that's what my channel's aimed to be at. Um, and, um, you know, we talk through some of the stuff that I get up to, yeah. uh, playing with four-wheel drives, um, Commodores, yeah. Land Rovers, Saabs, tuning. Um, <laughs> rescue missions. <laughs> rescue missions, yep. He's, um, he's real good with the car trailer. <laughs> uh, yeah, and um, explain some of the sort of more basic stuff that yeah. um, commonly asked questions, and you know how you how you make your choices about lubrication, um, oils and greases, and um, a couple of tips yeah. and tricks. So if you want the nitty gritty, like my stuff, kind of, I go a bit in depth. But if you want the real in depth, make sure you check out Ben's channel. Or if you're having trouble sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On that note. All right. We'll see you guys next time. See you guys. <laughs>